Hello everyone, Halloween is just a few short days away, so I'm back with yet another Halloween-themed blender video. Today we're going to be making this creepy, dirty jack-o'-lantern in fog with a bloody knife sticking out of it. I don't know, it's Halloween, things are weird. So let's just go ahead and get into it today. So as you can see, I already have this pumpkin here and it is of course made with geometry nodes as is pretty much everything that I do. But I'm not actually going to be showing you how I made this geometry node setup because well, I wasn't the one who actually made it. You can check out this awesome video from Rendermore where I basically took everything that he did right here. I'm just going to make a few modifications to it so that it can be used for our jack-o'-lantern purposes. So pause the video right now, go watch his video. I'll link to it in the description or something like that. And when you finish that, come back here and we can make this jack-o'-lantern. All right, so if you're still here, I assume you already have this entire geometry node set up and you're ready to start doing these modifications that I uh, talked about. So first thing we're actually going to do is let's just take a look at before we do our set shade smooth, obviously not much really changes other than the stem. Right now we just have this kind of shell of our pumpkin right now, but what we actually want is uh, two shells. We want kind of basically a solidify modifier applied to this, which unfortunately there is not a solidify modifier within Blender built in or within the geometry nodes built in. So we're going to kind of have to make our own. So first thing we're going to do is add in a join geometry node right here. Just plug this in after our shade smooth. So let's just add that in there like that. And then we're going to take a scale elements like that plug that into there and then plug our scale elements into our join geometry. And now if we actually kind of take a look at this, then you can see as I scale it down, we start getting this shell on the inside. It's kind of hard to see because, you know, there's a whole bunch of uh, geometry here right now. But once we're actually kind of scaled down a little bit, you can see that it's basically making a smaller pumpkin uh, inside of our pumpkin like this. Let's just bump this up to 0.94. And that gives us a nice little bit of thickness here. It's kind of hard to see, but you know, it, it's there. You can see a little bit of thickness there. But one thing we have to keep in mind right now is the normals of our faces. So right now, all of the normals are facing out at every point on our you know base surface mesh or whatever. But if we actually zoom in somehow to the inside, which you can't really see, you can kind of see there are two layers right here. There's one on this side and one on this side. Uh, the normals on this inside face are also pointing outwards like that, which are actually pointing towards the inside of our object. We want all the normals to be facing inward on the inside like this. So that's really easy to solve. We'll just flip faces only on this scaled elements part, the part that's, you know, on the inside. So we'll insert this in here. You won't really see a difference. You know, if I turn it on and off like that, nothing really happens. But whenever we actually start shading, that's going to be a little bit important. So now that we've done that, I can just start making the last couple modifications, which are mostly revolving around the materials. In his original video, he added the materials somewhere, I think like right around here. Uh, but I'm just going to be adding them in a little bit of a different spot and using a different material for the three different parts of our object. You know, the uh, outside of our pumpkin, the stem of our pumpkin, and then the inside part of our pumpkin. Each of those are gonna have a different material because you know the inside's a little bit different color from the outside. So let's just go ahead and add those three different materials so that they can affect the proper areas. So let's go ahead and add in a set material. We will put one right here between our join geometry and our flip faces, and this will be taking the inside part of our pumpkin. So we'll go ahead and I actually already have some pre-built materials here, but I will clear those out whenever we actually start working on those things. And then we'll add in another set material here. And this will be for the stem. So right before the stem joins in with the rest of the pumpkin like that, we'll insert this right here, set this one to stem. And then one more set material like this right before our join geometry for our base pumpkin like this. And now we'll set this one to pumpkin. This will be the outside of the pumpkin and then, so now we can come back over here to the last of our pumpkin like this, and we have all those different materials. So if we just go ahead and take a look at this right now, nothing's actually happening. There we go. So if we take a look at this right now, you can see that we actually have all our different materials. Let's go ahead and set this to cycles and GPU. And now we have a outside pumpkin right here, a stem, and then you won't really, can't see anything because there's no light in here, but we have an inside material. 
set in there as well. So now that we have our material set, we can do one final modification to the geometry nodes, and that is to kind of limit this um, noise texture that we have on the surface of the pumpkin, limit away from the top of the pumpkin, um, the top of the stem that is. Because you can see it's kind of like a really messy thing going on right here, and whenever we actually start doing our materials, that's gonna make a bit of a difficult situation for us right there. It's not gonna look very good. So we'll just limit it so that it's not affecting this portion of our stem right now. So let's just go ahead and delete this add node right here and we'll separate this, just connect this uh, top noise texture to this first set position and we'll leave it as is. We don't really need to do anything with it further. And then plug a second set position in here and it's not really gonna do anything right now. In fact, the entire thing has collapsed. Uh, that's because we need to plug this back into the offset. And then we're gonna plug in this second one into the offset as well. And right now, there is functionally no difference between this and what we had before. So we need to actually do the part where we limit where it's affecting it. And we're just going to do that by taking our position coordinates and plugging that into a separate X, Y, Z, like so. And then we are going to be using a less than, uh, that's a compare node. Take our compare node and then take the Z coordinates, plug that in right there. And we wanna say that it is less than uh, some number that affects this right here. Let's just go ahead and plug this in and you can see it gets rid of all of the variation because none of it except for like the very bottom is less than zero. If I start increasing this, you can see how it starts affecting it a little bit and moving up on the pumpkin like that. Let's go to our side view and take a look at it and figure out where that threshold is so that it can affect the stem but not the top part of the stem. Something like that, you know, 0 0.36, 0 0.365 maybe. No, that's too high. We'll just go 0 0.36 and you can see it kind of, just kind of doesn't affect that top part anymore. It's more flat right there. And it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't look great, but it's definitely a lot better than, you know, that it looks a lot better. So now that we have all that, it looks pretty good. Um, the pumpkin's actually ready for us to work with it. Rindermore has his own video on texturing the pumpkin and doing all the shading and everything. Uh, but for what we're doing, this will work perfectly fine. So right now I've got all these values already tuned in to where I want them to be for this video. Uh, you can play with it and make your own values. Obviously the whole point of doing these geometry nodes is that you can parameterize this and do whatever you want to with it and it's easy to change. But for the purposes of this video, we are done with geometry nodes. You know, copy these values if you want or come up with your own values. Let's go ahead and move on over to the layout tab and we can start working on cutting out these shapes for our pumpkin and making it into an actual jack-o'-lantern rather than just a boring old pumpkin. Um, before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my camera, get it kind of positioned vaguely where I want it. I obviously don't want it uh, this far away. So let's move it right here, move it down, and rotate along Z, something like this. You know, it looks fine like that. There we go. So that's roughly gonna be what our framing is. Um, the pumpkin looks pretty good right now, I think. I just need to move it up a little bit so that it's actually sitting more on the ground level. And there we go. I'll go ahead and add in our ground plane. So just so you know, this part of the tutorial is going to be a lot more um, unstructured, I guess you could say. Uh, it's just going to be a lot of me kind of talking and going through the process right here rather than necessarily um, following any sort of set thing like this. So let's just go ahead and actually start doing some things. The way that we're actually going to do this, let's rename this to pumpkin. And the first thing we actually want to do is duplicate this because we're going to be applying our geometry node modifier. And once you do that, if you wanna change your mind about something or if you wanna back up and undo something, it's gonna be a lot harder to do it unless you have a backup. So we're just gonna rename this duplicate to pumpkin backup like that. Let's go ahead and create a new collection for that. And we will call this things I don't need like that. And then as we go through the various steps in this things, we're gonna be creating various backups at different points. 
and we don't need them. So we'll just go ahead and disable it like that. You're not going to see it. It's not going to show up in render and we can just work on our actual pumpkin like this. So first thing we're actually going to do is apply our modifier. So hover over your modifier like that and press control A. It will apply it with all the settings that you have. So we can actually tab into edit mode and obviously we have all the vertices now and everything like that. We can even you know check the normals and on the outside, all of the normals are pointing towards the outside. But if we go on the inside of the pumpkin, you can see that everything's pointing to the inside as it should be. That's why we did that whole flip faces thing like that and you can see None of the normals are crossing through onto the inside of the pumpkin like this. So we can hide the normals again now, and we can actually start working on cutting out the pumpkin. And the way we're going to be doing that is with the knife tool. You can either click down over here to the knife tool like this right over here, or press K to bring up the knife tool for a one-time cut. And as I'm hovering over, there's this green box following me around. And whenever I hover over a vertex, it has a little red outline to that. And the way you'll do this is you'll just click and hold and drag it to where you want your cut to be made. Something like this. Like that. And then if you let go, it's still doing that thing like that. Uh, just press enter and it finalizes your cut like that. You can see that it is not you know, joining everything together whenever you're passing over from one vertex to another. Uh, directly rather than going between vert vertices on the edges. So we can just go ahead and um, make both of our cuts for our eyes like this. I want kind of a little angry face or something like that. Something along these lines. Make it slant down like it's a little bit angry. Curve over. And then come back up. Something like that. Press enter. Now we have two vague eyes. Something like that. And finally, for a mouth, we'll make it kind of a an evil grin, something like that. Come over like this. Make these little jagged teeth. And there we go. Press enter, and that is finalized as well. So let's go ahead and just go uh, press three, go into face select mode, and let's select all of our faces. Um, first thing I want to do though is, this looks a little bit weird right here, so we'll just kind of ignore that. We'll select all of that together. Something like this. Let's select everything that is a part of our eye. I don't want that little cut right there because it just looks a little, actually yeah, we'll add that in. Uh, the whole point of doing it with a knife like this is just because it looks a bit more organic, like you actually used a knife to cut it, you get some more of these jagged edges, things like that. Let's go ahead and actually press Shift D to duplicate our faces. We tab out of edit mode, you can see we have this extra little piece uh, right there kind of overlapping on top of it. So back into edit mode, let's press, um, make sure all your faces are selected, the duplicated ones, that is. Uh, press P and separate by selection. And now that we do that, we actually have two separate objects here. We have the pumpkin that we made our original cut into, and then we have the cutout faces like this. So what we can do here is let's rename these to cutouts, something like that. And then let's scale and then press shift Z so that it's not scaling along the Z axis. It's just scaling out away from the pumpkin like this horizontally um, and just get it away from the face like, or away from the surface of the pumpkin like this. And the reason we're doing this is because if you don't, it acts a little bit weird with the Boolean modifier. So now that we've done this, we can take all of our faces right here and just press E, or let's press A to select everything, and then extrude everything. And then if you do that, it just kind of goes inward like that. So uh, let's actually go inside of the pumpkin because what we want to do is just extrude it far enough so that you can actually see it inside uh, this second layer in here. So I'm not really sure, right there, like that. Make sure I'm actually looking at the right area when I'm doing this. Extrude, make sure that we're seeing everything come through like this. And now that we have that, you can just press T to get out of edit mode. So now that we've done that, you can see we have these weird cutouts that go through both layers of our pumpkin. They go from the outside all the way through to the inside. 
And now that we've done that, we can take our pumpkin backup because I said we'd be needing that and I hope you listened to me and kept a backup. Duplicate that one more time, take our pumpkin backup, put it up here and rename it scene pumpkin. And the reason we're doing this is because if you apply a Boolean modifier to you know, this one, this pumpkin, weird things start happening. And I don't, I don't know, I can't explain it. Um, so actually we're just gonna delete our pumpkin. Press okay, press delete. And then we have our scene pumpkin here. We're going to apply our geometry nodes modifier. This is such a roundabout process. I don't even understand it. So let's take our scene pumpkin, apply a Boolean modifier, and then click our cutouts like that. And then if we hide our cutouts, you can see nothing really happened. There's a little bit of a weird shape here. And in fact, if we go over to edit mode, nothing much really changed. I, I really don't understand why, but the way kind of around that go from exact to fast. And now we have our cutouts like that and they look horrible. That's okay. We're going to fix that. We'll make them look better. Also this weird shape right there, but whatever. Um, Anyways, apply our modifier like that. And it looks really weird, really bad. Let's head over to our um, vertex object data properties. You know, where you make your vertex groups, head over to normals and then click auto smooth. And now it looks a lot better. You know, once you do that, it also kind of messes with the curvature um, along here. It messes with all that. See if I toggle between the two, it kind of turns that into a hard crease right there. So play with your um, angle value right here and raise it up until you just start getting some weird behavior in any of your vertices like that. Once they start doing some weird stuff like that, lower it until you're good. And then that should smooth out all of this stuff while keeping your hard lines in here. So now we have our cutout like this. Let's just rotate it a little bit so it's not facing the camera so directly. Um, we have that and we can actually start working on our knife. The way I did that, it was actually a really simple knife. I honestly didn't put a whole lot of effort into it. Uh, take, add a cube, scale it along the x-axis, scale it along the y-axis until you get something vaguely the right proportions of a knife handle. Let's actually call this knife handle move it into a separate collection because why not? Press okay, um, hide everything else. So let's work on our knife right here. The knife handle, like I said, just get vaguely the correct proportions and then not a whole lot of effort put into it, honestly. Um, add in a couple loop cuts right here, like that. Let's take this loop cut, bring it down here and then take our single edge right here, move it along the x-axis, move this edge right here along the x-axis, not so much. So we get kind of this roughly groove shaped shape right there. Add in a bevel modifier. And that looks pretty good to me. Um, actually, not do a bevel modifier, let's do subdivision like that, add in a couple loop cuts right here to force it to smooth out a little bit. Something like that. It's a little bit smoother this way, and then you can also edit. Uh, it's easier to work with the, I say it's easier, and then I make it look very much not easier. Like that. Bring that in just to kind of, you know, give this a little bit of contrast right here. Something like this is probably fine. Like that and one final loop cut right there just to kind of, there we go. It looks roughly like a knife handle. I'm okay with it. Uh, maybe we can proportional, turn on proportional editing and then just scale this a little bit, kind of get some more dimension on that side, scale 
this one along the Z axis, not the whole thing, just this one. You know, that looks vaguely knife handle-ish. It's not a, an important part of our shape here, so I'm fine leaving it as is. Add in another plane or a cube, scale this one along the Z axis, make it really thin. Uh, this is going to be our knife blade. Move it up. Let's go into side view, move it up to roughly the middle. In fact, uh, shift select our knife blade, come over to uh, the object properties tab, right click over our Z value right here, and then copy to selected. Or is it copy all to selected? That'll just make sure that this, our knife blade, occupies the same space as our knife handle. Let's go ahead and rename this to knife handle. Something like that. Head on over to overhead view. Scale it along the X axis until it's vaguely knife proportioned. Y. Something like that is probably fine. We will add in our subdivision surface again. And this one we want quite a bit sharper edges for obvious reasons. this over, make this back edge a lot tighter, and then add one more in the middle like this, and take this face right here, press three, go into face select, and scale Z to zero. And that'll give us our nice sharp knife edge like that. We can add one loop cut right here, uh, move it down. And then what we can do is take this edge right here and move it along the x-axis some. Add one more loop cut there. And take this one and move it back. Actually, no. Let's not do that. Let's take all of these uh, go into there, press shift, uh, shift S, and then cursor to selected. And then what we can do is change our um, pivot point to 3D cursor. And then we can take ah, vertex selection, move all of these, and scale X zero. Scale X zero. And that'll give us a bit of a sharper knife point, like that. Add one loop cut here. The exact shape isn't super important here, you know. Um, Transform this uh, back to individual origins. Scale along Z just to get a little bit extra, extra edge there. A little extra shape. Can't really see it a whole lot. There you go. Get a little bit. That looks not great. Whatever. You're not really going to see this part. I'm fine with it. It looks vaguely knife shaped. Um, that's fine by me. Let's move it out a little bit. Let's scale it along wide slightly. There you go. Really the only part you're going to be seeing is like from like this area right here. So as long as that looks decent, I'm happy with it. Um, let's bring back all of the rest of our stuff. First thing, let's parent the knife blade to the knife handle. So press Control P, set parent to object, and now as I move this around, the knife blade moves with it. 
Um, so let's head back over here, bring it roughly over there. And first thing we want to do is scale it because it's quite a bit larger than our pumpkin. I think that's roughly appropriate size. Yeah, that looks fine. So rotate over X, rotate over the local Y axis to kind of give it something like that. Move it along Z, along X until it intersects at, you know, some place that you like it. Just make it stab into the pumpkin. Just position the knife somewhere that you want it like that. Let's rotate our pumpkin a wee bit. Actually, that looks fine. Um, I'd rather this knife be in this crease because whenever I add the blood flow um, from the knife, I want it kind of flowing from here into the crevice and down like that. In fact, let's take all of this and rotate it a little. Rotate it around the median point and just so that we can see a little bit more of the crevice once I actually start adding the blood in there. And that looks good to me. So let's go ahead and work on modeling our blood right here uh, coming out of this knife handle. First thing we're going to do is add in yet another cube. Let's go move that into our collection. Uh, we'll move this one into the collection and we will call this one blood and scale our blood down by a lot, maybe. Where is our scale? There it is. Oh, because I added it way over there. Um, move it centered roughly over our knife. Make it really small. Figure out where it is. And let's just get it centered um, roughly Let's just get it centered roughly over the intersection of the knife and the blood. And once we do that, we can start kind of getting the rotation of it correct, just because we want it, we want this cube to not be very large and just kind of be sticking out of the, uh, where it's meeting right there. And then we'll be doing the rest of the modeling with the sculpt tools. So we've got that. Rotate it parallel to the knife blade, move it on the x-axis, move it along the y-axis, and down. Rotate along x. And there we go, that's roughly correct, so we'll scale it something like so. Just get it like this, so it's kind of a little block uh, surrounding the intersection right there, and then we'll model it from there. Like that. So that looks pretty good. We can add in a subdivision surface modifier, set it, to, well, we'll leave this on Catmull Clark, smoothing it, set the resolution pretty high, don't keyframe, um, and then we'll start modeling from here. So let's add in a couple loop cuts. That's good. And we will scale along the y-axis for both of these, kind of get it out there like that. And then we'll take these two center edges right here. We don't want it obviously to be a perfect sphere like that. Uh, we want it to kind of, what I'm thinking here is we want it to kind of flow into it like that. And then obviously that's not correct. And then same thing goes for looking at it from the sides right here. We want it to kind of bead up into it more like that shape. So let's go ahead and uh, erase all of that stuff. Go back in here. Let's select our two edges right here, scale those along like that. And you kind of see what I'm getting at here a little bit. Select our bottom edges on the outside like that. Scale those along the local Y axis, kind of like that and move it down so that it's more so that you're not seeing that um, inward curve, you know, how it was like a circle like that. Like, let's add a loop cut in here. Take these two faces along either side, scale those along the y-axis, give it a bit more shape 
something like that. It's not actually undo that. Let's add two loop cuts here. Let's bring them both into the center. And this is where, you know, since it's not perfectly lined up, it's behaving a little bit differently on each side. Um, I have to kind of correct these things by hand a little bit. All right, now that we've got that, let's take these two edges closest to the knife blade and move those along the local Z just so we can get a little bit of this beating up action right there. Add a loop cut, scale along the Z axis. Add a, add a loop cut here, scale this one along the Z axis. And you can see we're kind of getting this beating up shape a little bit. I think the, uh, let's go into face select, take that side and Both of those sides scale along the x axis, no, local y axis. There, we're kind of getting a little bit of the shape, but there's too much, it's too pointed. So I want to take these vertices, scale them in a little bit. And in fact, um, dissolve these edges right here. Turn on proportional editing. This is where things get a little bit weird. Make sure we're not going too far with it. There we go. And then do the same thing here. It's not perfect. Um, by any stretch of the word, face select, make sure we got all the faces selected. It, it is a bit difficult to work with this sometimes. Actually, I gotta hope I got it right. And then bring this up, something like that. That looks vaguely blood drop shaped. Maybe it's too tall, that's the problem there. Um, select all these top faces right here. Turn off proportional editing. Like I said at the beginning, this is not a very structured tutorial. Very much just me kind of doing weird things. There's too much definition here. <sighs> not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it at all. You know what? It looks like a, a gold nugget, sort of. I want to round out these edges. Where is the edge right there? Something like that. I don't know. That works fine. But now I want the blood to kind of dribble on into this crevice and then down the crevice like that. So we're just going to kind of extrude these things here. We're going to extrude like that. Let's move it down. It gets a little bit weird because you're like trying to work with these complex three-dimensional shapes. Okay, now. And then just trying to get it to match up properly. Let's add a loop cut right there. Got to rotate this along some axis. The rotate, yeah, the rotations here get really, really weird. Let's 
switch it to no the, the coordinates the orientations let's look at uh, switch it to normal there we go that looks a little better Yeah, the hard part is getting the flow or getting the shape of it, like just the general shape correct. And then once you do that, you can just kind of um, mess with it as, as needed. That was obviously not the right answer. Something like that. Let's see what it looks from the camera view. You can't even see it. Let's take everything and global medium point. I want to be able to see the blood a little bit. There we go. It's a little better. All right, switch this back to normal. Let's look at what we're working with right here. Um, actually, let's move it down a wee bit. And then I think that's probably as far down as it needs to go. So now we can actually start working on the shape. Um, let's get it out of there. Add a loop cut here and move that out. I want it sitting on top of the surface here, obviously. And we want to make this kind of bulgy here at the end so we're gonna scale this a little bit add another loop cut bring that down scale that down there we go like there's a, a drop of blood that's kind of trailing all this stuff behind it in fact let's actually select that and that scale all of it up a wee bit, scale up this face, move it along the y-axis and then the x-axis. It's really difficult to work in these coordinates. Um, nothing quite makes sense here. Move that that way. Um, and then we will take this one, move it along x. I'm a fan of that. We go, that looks vaguely correct. Ah, oh, there we go, this is what I wanted all along. Not really, because I can't now see uh, what it is I'm doing. I wish I could actually see. There we go. Now we're making progress. Okay. that and we can work on getting this looking right. Make sure that it doesn't, there we go. I 
that to normal. That's scale zero. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Um, there we go, that looks a little better. You just kind of got to play with it a little bit. And eventually, you might start figuring out how things work in the coordinate system. <laughs> I don't know. I, I realize I'm not speaking a whole bunch right now because there's not really a whole bunch to say. Um, everything is just kind of me figuring it out as I go. Because, you know, no matter how much preparation you do, the little tiny variations that you're working with from time to time, or every time you do this, they add up very quickly. Um, see how it looks from camera view. I'm still not happy with this area up here. This looks almost right. Um, it's a little bit big. I just want to scale that down a little bit. Let's take all of that, all of that. But actually, I can only scale one at a time. So I'll scale it. Take that one, scale it. GY, get it back in. And then from here, There we go, that looks better. I'm sure that there is another weird thing going on here. There you go. That looks kind of better. <sighs> now for this mess right here. Let's just see what happens if I dissolve a couple vertices. Makes it look a lot worse. All right. Um, this is something I did not plan for, but let's try going into sculpt mode and see what happens. Um, I don't use sculpt mode very often, so this is probably going to turn out horribly. Eh, no, that actually looks pretty decent. Let's reduce the strength quite a bit. Bump up our size right there. There you go, that looks a lot better. figured it out. It still seems a bit tall. Um, so let's just take all of, not those, not those faces. Hopefully that's enough. Take all of these faces, turn on proportional editing, scale Z. Okay, GZ. Okay, now scale Y. No, that's not gonna solve it. It's close, it's almost there. I just lowered it too much. Let's take these edges right here, G, Z, Z, and we'll bring up this edge. You know what? I'm happy enough with this. You can spend more time on it if you want. 
I said I was happy with it and then immediately decided I was not. There we go. Now I'm happy with it. It's good enough. Um, you can spend more time on it if you want. I'm good with it for the purposes of this tutorial. All right, so now that we've got the mesh all set up and good to go, we can start working on the materials and the lighting of our scene as well. So let's just go ahead and head on over to the shading tab and make sure, of course, that you're in cycles with GPU turned on. Um, you could do it otherwise, I don't know. Uh, I just do it in cycles. So I've already got all the materials assigned to our pumpkin, you know, the stem of the pumpkin, the outside, and then the inside of the pumpkin as well. So let's just go ahead and really quickly attach kind of a base color to these things so that we can work on our lighting a little bit after that. Um, you know, this, this looks pretty good. Maybe darken that a little bit and then come up and we'll make it a little bit, you know, we'll make it kind of smooth uh, right now. Then for our stem of our pumpkin, we'll just turn this into kind of a brownish color. So make it orange and then really dark like that. And that gives you a really brown. And this one will be really rough. Um, not 100%, but quite close to 100%. And then for our, the inside of our pumpkin, we're just going to make that kind of a little bit orange. So just pull it and find what kind of uh, hue you want for this. Uh, if you're looking at HSV, that's hue saturation value. So find the right hue and then pull your saturation till it's just a little bit. You can just kind of start to see it. Pumpkins, I don't really know what the inside color of a pumpkin is, but I'm, I'm going for white here. And that looks pretty good to me. Obviously it just looks kind of black on the inside and you can't really see what's going on uh, inside the pumpkin right now because there's no light inside of it. So now that we have that, we kind of have our base shade right here, our base material, we can actually work on the lighting a little bit. So let's head on over to overhead view and we have our default light right here, our default point light. And first thing we want to do is actually convert this into a spotlight. And then we're going to use this as kind of a backlight for our pumpkin. So it's, we're going to have it so that you're just getting a little bit of light along the edge right here and maybe a little bit on this edge right here, just to kind of highlight the edge of the pumpkin and get a little bit of that contour in there. So let's head back over to overhead view and bring it right around here. Something like that is probably fine like that. And then you can take this little yellow dot down here, click it and then drag it. And then it'll automatically go towards the pumpkin. You know, as you drag it around, it kind of just adaptively figures out where you're wanting to point the thing. So just point it at the pumpkin somewhere like that. Let's go into material view and see what we've got. It's a little bit high right now and it's a little bit too far forward. We're getting a little bit too much light right here. I'd rather keep it limited to just the, these two edges maybe right there like that. So what we can do is just bring our light a little bit farther back along the X axis, no, the Y axis, something like that and then maybe bring it along X. There we go. Just kind of getting a little bit like that. And then of course, you know, we're going to want to redirect the light again, point it back at our pumpkin so that we're getting that all nice and good. And let's bring it down some like that. I think that looks pretty good. One last time, redirect it at the pumpkin. And that looks pretty good to me right there. So let's just go ahead and make it a little bit blue. Um, this backlight, we're going to want it to be a little bit blue, not a whole lot. Um, something really subtle, kind of like, uh, like it's moonlight or something like that. Uh, let's see how, how big is our light source right now? It's kind of hard to see. Let's bring up the radius a little bit, something like that. And then if we kind of look at it here, it'll just be a little bit softer when you do it like that. You know, if we make it a really small point light source, uh, it gives really hard edges and the shadow down here is really hard as well. If we just bring that up, soften it out, something like that looks pretty good to me. I think I want to bring it over a little bit more and then there we go. And then we can take our blend right here, this uh, beam under the beam shape, take your blend, bring it up. And then that just further, that smooths out kind of the transition from our lit area to our dark area on the side. If it's, you know, if you turn it down to zero, it's a little bit harder, uh, a harder light. And there's not so much blending right there. We just want to blend it a little bit. 
So now that we have that light set up, we actually need a key light coming in from this side to light up the main part of our pumpkin right there. And for that, we're gonna be using an area light. So let's add in an area light like that. We'll bring it up something like that. Go ahead and switch this to a uh, disc right now. And then go into overhead view. We'll come over here, something like this. And then again, you can just take the yellow dot drag it over to where you want it and let's bring it up some drag it back over and shrink down the size you don't want it to be too big too soft of a light on our pumpkin maybe something like that looks pretty good let's see what it looks like from here you know if you if you have a really small thing like that again hard shadows right there if you bring up the size the shadow uh, the shadow softens up quite a bit so something like that. And it also, you know, affects the features on the pumpkin itself. I think this looks pretty good right now. So we'll just go ahead, erase all that and add in one more light right now to kind of fill in these shadows right here. Um, let's bring that down a little bit. There we go. Now we need to fill in these shadows right here. So let's add in one final light. We'll just make this one a point light, bring it over you know, maybe right here, something like that. And then obviously turn down the brightness of this one and just kind of bring it up a little bit to fill in those shadows and shrink down the size. It's a pretty small light. I think that looks pretty good. So if we take these, put them back inside of our light collection right here, make sure you, you don't have to, but it helps to keep it organized. Uh, we can actually just go through and check all of these and make sure we like them. Let's rename this one to backlight. And this one will be fill and key light. So if we, you know, obviously turn everything down, make sure you have your background turned down to zero. And then if we bring in these lights one by one, you can kind of see what effect they have. Get a little bit of a blue light right there. We can add in our key light to kind of make it, you know, so you can actually see what's going on and then your fill light just fills in these shadows a little bit um it's a little bit dark up here so maybe we can take our fill light bring it up a little bit just so that it's getting more of a direct path at at that area like that yeah it's a little bit of a difference not a whole lot Maybe take our backlight and rotate it along the X, just point it up a little bit and you're getting a little bit more of this edge right there as well. So the lighting looks pretty good right now and we can actually kind of start working on the actual materials themselves and kind of perfecting those. But before we do that, let's just go ahead and add in a real quick material to our knife, knife handle and floor as well. So for here, we'll add in a new material, call it knife handle and we'll just go ahead and make this a really pretty dark color not 100 percent black but pretty darn close just bring it up a little bit from there something like that is probably pretty good and we'll just go ahead and make it pretty rough not super duper rough the knife handle you know kind of like i alluded to before isn't really that important right here um, you can kind of take some liberties with that and real quick, um, knife blade material, call it that. And then for this knife blade, we'll just give it kind of a grayish color, something like that. Maybe a little bit of a blue tint to it. Just very, very subtle blue. And that's pretty good for now. And finally, or not finally, we have the floor to do as well, but for the blood, we'll just create one and we will call this blood. And the blood, of course, we're just gonna give it a really dark, dark red color. So bring it really saturated red, kind of bring it, bring the color down, something like that. Fully saturated and kind of figure out. There we go. It's kind of hard to see like that because we need to make it a rough thing. Cause you know, blood is a fluid which means it's not really gonna have a whole lot of surface imperfections and things like that. Maybe just give it a little bit so it's not perfectly flat or perfectly smooth and call that pretty good for now. And last but not least, let's add in our floor material. Let's just name this one to floor and then we'll just give this kind of a brownish color as well. So make it a saturated orange, bring the color all the way down, something 
like that. Maybe not quite so orange, a little bit more yellow in there as well. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and make our really quick wood material right now. Right now it's just one flat color, but wood has grain in it. And to make grain, we're just gonna use a noise texture. So make a noise texture, connect that to our texture coordinates. And let's just take a look at what that actually looks like. If we go to overhead view, you can see that it's really just a pretty standard noise texture. Um, you can just bring the size down like that. What we're gonna do for this though, is bring up our detail a little bit, bring up the roughness quite a bit. That gives you a lot of detail in there like that. And then to make it actually look like wood, we're just gonna scale it along our X axis, scale it down like that, and you get this stretchiness to it like that. Let's actually bring up our scale a little bit, something like that. And then we can bring up the scale like this quite a bit. And then when we actually look at it from our camera angle, you can see it looks kind of like wood, you know? It's got a little bit of that uh, grain texture in there. And let's bump that, something like that. You know, this that looks pretty good. It looks like wood right there like that. And then we can use this to actually mix between two different uh, brown colors right here. So we'll take our original brown color and then we'll plug that into our color two. For our color one, we'll actually do the same thing, but this one, we'll just bring it up a little bit in the values to make it a little bit lighter shade. Maybe bring down the saturation some and change the hue just a little bit. Just really subtle, small differences like that. So now if we take this noise texture, combine it into our factor and we plug this into our base color, then you can see we actually, well, you can, there's a little bit of variation here in our two different wood colors, but not a whole lot. We can kind of increase that by just darkening the one wood color. And now you can start to see there's a little bit of texture in there like that. I think that looks reasonably good for a wood texture right now. Um, I'm just going to make it 4D. So if we want to, we can change the pattern here, you know, something like that, whatever you want to. I don't know why it's not default to 4D. Um, it just feels like it'd give more control like that. Anyways, now that we've got that, we can also kind of use this same uh, noise texture to do a roughness map as well. Cause right now, you know, it's all just one one texture like this, but real wood, once it has all these little grains in here, they all have different variations on how, how much they affect the roughness of the material. So let's add a map range. And then we'll plug in our noise texture right here to the map range. And we'll go from 0.1, go from 0.1 to 0. Point, or Right, yeah, from point one, from point eight. And that way it just, you know, adds a little bit more contrast to what we're gonna do. And then we'll bring these up to whatever roughness value we choose. So we can use our roughness slider to kind of, you know, figure out a, a vague average for what we're gonna be using for our roughness. And then this will just allow us to add the variation into it. So, you know, maybe just kind of sliding around, figuring out what looks good with our reflections. You know, obviously, if you're going for like a glossy wood floor or whatever, low roughness, if it's a really, really uh, kind of rough hewn floor or whatever, you can add a little bit more roughness. I actually think the somewhere around 0.5 looks vaguely correct. It looks kind of good to me. So we'll just go kind of 0.1 on either side of that value. So if we plug this into our roughness, now you can see we're getting a little bit more variation here in our wood. So if we just say, take a look at this area right here, if I disconnect it, it's really flat looking and then plug that in and then we're actually getting some variation in there. So that looks all fine and dandy right now. And finally, we can just add in some bump mapping as well for uh, to get a little bit more of that surface imperfections in here. We will just duplicate our roughness map or duplicate our map range and we'll use different values for this, but that way we can just have it, add in a bump node and then we can go ahead and just take this noise texture and plug that into our height. And that obviously looks really bad. So just bring this all the way down to like 0 0.01 or something. And then from there, I like to just take the strength to zero and then just slowly bring it up. Let's look at just this one little section. And then as I bring it up, you know, we'll start to see a little bit of that variation in there. It's really subtle, but it's kind of there. I think that looks pretty good, but for a little bit more variation, you know, we can actually add in a second noise texture. 
This one will just go to a non, uh, non squeezed texture. You can just take this straight into there. It's not really going to matter a whole lot. Let's look at it from here and kind of decide what size we want this to be. You know, something like that. Maybe remove a little bit of detail from there. Maybe make it quite a bit bigger. And then this way we just get a little bit more bumps in here from all this stuff. And then we can just mix this with the other one. So take a mix RGB. And then what we'll actually do is go from here. Instead of going directly into the map range with the other one, we'll go from both of our different noise textures, take these in here. And then now if we kind of look at it from above, you can kind of mix between the two. Just add in a little bit. Actually, let's switch this one. Instead of just a straight mix going from one to the other, you can see it kind of fades from one to the other, but I'd like it to kind of, you know, add into it. So let's see what happens if we add not really a fan, maybe subtract. There we go. That gives us a little bit more contrast. It keeps the original, um, keeps the original grain of the wood, but then just kind of makes it a little bit more variable, makes it a little bit more variable. I guess, uh, for lack of a better word. So if we do that, come into here, if we kind of just switch between the two, so if we go from here to here, there's not really a whole lot of difference, but you know, it's something. And I appreciate there being something to work with. In fact, let's just bring this back to zero, one. And pull back the strength a little bit because now it's a little bit too much. There we go, something like that. I think I'm, you know, I think that's pretty good for now. I don't think we need to touch that right now. I think we're pretty much done with it. So we can start working on a few other things like, oh, I don't know, the pumpkin, the whole point of the tutorial. And of course, you know, like with the wood, the most important thing here is variation. You don't want the pumpkin to just be one flat color, one smooth object like it is. Now we're gonna add a whole lot of variation. So best way to do that, noise texture. Let's add one of those in here. Control T to add in all of our texture coordinates and everything. Not strictly necessary, but I like doing it. It's helpful. And let's take a look at what that looks like. Right now, you know, let's switch this to 40 and we can just kind of play around with the values and kind of figure out what looks good to us, right? This is gonna be, you know, kind of just some macro level variations in our color. We're gonna make, uh, we're gonna mix our orange color with you know, a black color, like kind of dirt or something on the surface of our pumpkin. And so let's actually just add that in there right now. Um, mix RGB, and then we're gonna take our pumpkin right here, our pumpkin color, plug it into one, and then two, just bring it all the way down to black. And then if we hook that up here, and just go ahead and hook up our noise texture, we can kind of see what we're ending up with. Right now, not a whole lot of difference. That is because there's not really a lot of contrast in our noise texture right now. So let's add a color ramp in between there like that and take a look at what that looks like. Bring the two colors in quite a bit and then you can kind of see where we're ending up with our various shapes, something like that. And of course, add in a whole bunch of detail because we want it to be nice and detailed and everything, like dirt is on there and it's kind of spread out and everything. Detail has a lot of grain to it. And bring up the roughness quite a bit. I think that looks pretty good like that. Let me scale it down a wee bit. Something like that, that looks pretty good. It looks like kind of, you can think of this like a dirt mask or something like that. We'll just go ahead and see what this looks like on here. And it looks like our pumpkin is kind of a bit dirty. Actually, if we think about it, let's see, the black is going to be the pure orange because that's zero and zero is going to be color one and one is going to be the other one. So, so actually we want to kind of flip this right now. Let's just go ahead and actually flip our two color values, something like this. So we get a little bit of dirt and a lot of You know, that looks pretty good right now. Let's just roughen it up a little bit and kind of see how that's playing out with us. I think, you know, that looks, that looks okay. Could be better. 
But for now, that's a good starting point. Let's add in another noise texture to just kind of fill in the gaps a little bit as well. So just control shift D that'll duplicate and keep the connections right here. And this one will just kind of be, you know, slightly less detailed, bigger noise textures as well. Um, let's also, of course, bring in our color ramp, connect those two like that, leave the two zones roughly the same. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Just add in a different variation there. And let's make this quite a bit smaller, actually. Something like this. This will just allow us to kind of fill in those extra gaps. Let's bump down our roughness a little bit and bump down our noise or our detail quite a bit. Something like that. This will just, you know, mix in there a little bit. So we'll use another mix node. And this time we'll connect our uh, noise textures, our color ramps, to the two different colors. And then from here we'll use a darken. And then as I you know, if we start at zero, it's just going to be the output of this one, the, the top one, and nothing changes. But then as I add this in here, you can see it kind of just darkens in those lighter spots a little bit like that. And we don't want a whole lot, just a tiny, tiny amount. In fact, let's look at our pumpkin and see what happens as we do this. If I bump it in quite a bit. Not really a whole lot has changed. It's a little bit, kind of makes it more grimy looking rather than like actually having dirt or decay or whatever on it. So let's just bump it, you know, something like that. Just a small, small difference. While I'm thinking about it, I'm actually going to take my key light and bump up the brightness just a little bit. I think the color of the pumpkin looks pretty good. It looks pretty dirty, pretty grimy and nasty. Um, actually, let's move our key light a little left or to the right. Just kind of fill in this this shadow right here, make this a little bigger. There we go. This is a this is a process, you know, you have to keep tweaking it and everything. Uh, let's make sure our key light is pointed in the right direction for one thing. Hmm. I want to move it back over. So yeah, if if I keep moving back and forth between lighting and materials. That's because you really can't do one without the other. You need both to actually be able to properly make everything look good. Okay, so now that we have our dirt layer on top of here, we can actually use that to affect the roughness of the material. Because right now, you know, if we look at uh, this area right here, for example, you can see that our dirt, when it transitions to dirt and everything, it's the same roughness, you're getting the same reflection level as you are on like the clean pumpkin areas, like here, here, things like that. So we wanna make sure that this dirt part is actually rougher and it's not reflecting the light as much. We want it to look a little bit more like that, just on the dirt though. So we'll use our noise textures again as roughness maps. That's gonna be kind of a, a common theme here is you use your color texture or your color noise texture, your mask or whatever, as a roughness map as well, because those things tend to go hand in hand. So for this, we will use a map range, because that's kind of just the easiest way to control the numerical value of the roughness. And we'll plug in our roughness map here into our value. We'll leave the uh, from values as the same. And then for the two values, we will keep the white part, or actually the black part. How does this work? Let's see, the, the black part is going to be the pumpkin. That's the orange, right? Yeah. So the black part of our mask, this part and this part over here, that's going to be the kind of pure uh, pumpkin color. And the white parts over here, up here, and all that stuff, that's going to be the dirt parts. So that's where we want our roughness mask to be one. So for right now, we'll actually put our two minimum as zero because again, the black parts are going to be the pumpkin and this is going to be one. So actually, so right now we'll actually, so right now we'll actually put our, so right now we'll actually leave our two max value the same because again, one equals dirt equals high roughness value and our two minimum we'll figure out some lower end value that we want for it. And we don't want it to be perfectly reflective, of course. So let's just plug that in and see what it looks like. And if we do this automatically, you know, you can you're kind of start to get the effect here. Let's erase all that stuff. 
and let's just raise our minimum value here again the roughness of our main pumpkin to something that makes a little bit more sense you know we want it to still be a little bit rough but not too rough not too smooth either it's kind of a, a weird looking thing right there i'm not sure i'm not sure what was going on there it just looks weird from from this angle you know our, our pumpkin's going to be a little bit smooth get a little bit reflective but the actual dirt parts now you can see are not reflective at all maybe we can bump that down to like 0.9 Nine, eight, something like that. Just get a little bit in there. Eh, can't really tell the difference a whole lot. So we'll just leave it at something like that. Um, and we can play with our seed values to just give us different shapes and maybe not look so weird in various different places. Um, let's actually just take a look at it and see what it looks like. I kind of want, you know, to have... A little bit of dirt down in this area and a little bit up here but leave this area a bit more clean so you know what we could do is just play with the noise or with the w value and that will just give us different things here as well or if i find one that i almost kind of like then i can use the rotation values in our mapping node and just kind of move move it around this way like that See, this looks pretty good right here. I like, I like this because we're getting a lot of dirt right here, not a lot right there. And then we're getting this little speck of dirt here, a little bit around the knife. That's actually a little inadvertently a kind of a cool touch right there, a little bit over there. So now that we have all of this uh, dirt kind of where we want it, let's see what it looks like with our color. And of course, I, again, forgot that black, it does not equal dirt. Black equals... Um, Pumpkin. Let's just flip it, you know? Uh, let's take our colors and flip them. So black equals dirt. So we need to flip these numbers as well. Copy that there and set this one to 0 0.2. No, point, not z negative. Uh, maybe 0 0.1, something like that. This looks a little bit better. Make sure this is shaded smooth. Yeah. That looks reasonably good. Getting some weird shading artifacts around here again let's check this out again ah i must have disabled that at some point so that looks fine now all right that looks reasonably okay could be better could be worse um right now we'll just go ahead and work on bump mapping because you know that will just make everything look like 10 times better just by default so we'll add in another noise texture. This one, let's give it quite a bit less detail. In fact, let's bump the detail down to zero and bump our roughness down a little bit. Obviously, well, actually roughness doesn't really matter a whole lot. And then we'll bump our scale up a little bit as well. Let's give it a little bit of detail, not a, not a whole lot, just something non-zero. Non and this will just give us kind of some texture right here that we can use uh, with our bump node. And we can mix it with the, uh, let's actually mix it with our color, our dirt, you know. We'll add another one of these. And then let's take this, plug it into here. Let's add a color ramp just to add a little bit of contrast to it. Take a look at it from here. Something like that. I think that looks reasonably good. You know, just a little bit of contrast in there like that. So now that we have these, we'll take this, output it into here, and see what that looks like. Well, as we do that, it's just darkening it, which I actually want it to lighten it. I'm not exactly sure what, like if white means push out and black means push in uh, on a bump node. That's the way I, in, I interpret it. So we want to actually make it so that where our dirt is, our black parts right here, we want that to actually make it lighter. We want it white. So let's add in an invert node. And then if we do that and switch this to add, then you can see zero, of course, is just our color ramp over here. And if we add it in, it starts lightening up 
those spots where there is dirt. It's actually quite a bit, um, quite a bit of dirt on this thing. Hmm. Let's just see what that looks like. Let's plug it into our normal and see what that looks like. Obviously it looks really bad. Actually it looks kind of cool. Um, not the look we're going for. So 0 0.01, pull the strength all the way down and then bump it up slowly until we can start to see a little bit of a difference. So let's just take a look at like this section right here. If we disconnect, it goes kind of smooth and reconnect. You can see we're getting a little bit of bump, uh, bumpiness right there. If we look at the edge of our pumpkin, you can really see it like right around here and kind of on the transition of the shadows. You know, something like that maybe. Give it a little bit more juice. Something like that. And finally for our pumpkin material, we're gonna add a little bit of a clear coat, really small amount here. Um, actually not that small of an amount. So let's take our map range, connect that in there. Last one, I promise this outside pumpkin material is almost done. Connect this to our clear coat, and then we'll give this from zero to one, and then from zero to 0 0.63, and that gives it just a little bit of a clear coat on top of it. Actually, small, small difference. Let's plug this into our, our clear coat normal as well, and then that looks pretty good, you know? Um, as far as evil pumpkin things go, I think I'm gonna actually add a little bit more roughness. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. It's a pretty dirty pumpkin, which is what we're going for. So now just chugging right along to our pumpkin stem. This one, again, similar thing, noise texture and then plug this into a mix RGB. We'll use our base color, and then kind of same thing we did with the wood. We'll use a slightly uh, lighter shade of brown as well. Not a whole lot different. Maybe make this one a little bit more like kind of a greenish color, more yellowish green, like it's kind of, you know, still green from being on the vine, because, you know, pumpkin vines are green, in case you didn't know. Let's add in a color ramp. Plug that to there, plug this one into the factor, and let's actually just take a look at what it looks like before we do anything else. We'll give it quite a bit more scale. Let's bring it in so we can actually see what we're what we're working with. Something like that, you know, bump up the detail a wee bit, bump up the roughness, and then you can kind of see how we have our pumpkin uh, stem right there, just mixing between the two. This one, there's not really a whole lot of motivation for like, oh, what are we trying to accomplish? Like we were with the dirt where it's like, oh, well, it's dirt and it has to be, you know, certain places. This one's just variation because variation is more realistic. So if we take a look at it, it's not a whole lot different from just being one. It makes it a little bit more green on average, a um, little bit more fresh looking. I don't know, looks pretty good to me. So we'll just go ahead and make another noise texture. This one, we'll switch to 4D, change this W value a little bit, and we'll use a map range. Plug this into our map range right there, and then we'll switch this from, or to 0 0.75 and 0 0.9. This gives us, again, a little bit of variation on our roughness right here. We plug this into there. Not really a whole lot of difference. Um, Actually zoom in quite a bit. So we go from there. See, there's a, a little bit of difference. In fact, let's raise this one just a tiny bit. Raise that one a little bit. I think that looks reasonably good. Looks fine. Uh, obviously, you know, it's going to be zoomed out and kind of tiny, so I'm not too concerned with uh, what it actually ends up looking like. So now for bump mapping, because you always have to use bump mapping to make it look better because everything looks better with bump mapping. And this one obviously, of course, makes it look not great. That we 
works fine. And then add in a little bit here. Let's go from uh, zero to one right there. And then we'll just add a little bit more contrast from here to there. So that just gives us more contrast as well. Um, like that, if you toggle it on and off, it looks like that. So now if we do that, we can actually bring it in a little bit until we kind of find something that looks a little bit better. So let's bump this up until we can kind of start to see a difference. I think that looks fine. If we toggle it on and off, you can see there's a little bit, a little bit of something going on there. Looks fine to me. So our stem is done and we could work on the inside right now, but since I don't have a light on the inside, we don't really need to. Let's just do one little touch up on the blood and that'll be to add a little tiny, tiny bit of subsurf. I mean like the smallest amount because light will penetrate into it a little bit. Um, but I, in my testing, you know, if you add like anything that would resemble a reasonable number, it actually ends up being way too much. So we're going to ignore that. So for our knife blade, you know, we could just leave it as is, but I figure since we've stabbed it into something, there's blood coming out of it. It should have a little bit of blood on the handle. So we're just going to take our principal BSDF here and duplicate it. And then we'll use a mix shader to mix between the two. Plug this one there, there, and there like that. And then we'll switch this one to being well, you know, blood colored, something like that, a little bit of a dark, dark red, something like that. And we'll give it a little bit rough, uh, less roughness. So it'll be smoother, like it's glistening from the blood. And I think that looks pretty good. So now if we actually look at it and we mix between the two, obviously it looks not good because it's just covering the whole knife blade. So we need to actually use a little bit of a gradient so that, you know, from the tip, all the way up to like here where it kind of penetrates that will be covered in blood and you can't really see a whole lot of it but we just want a little bit kind of right at the surface there like that so let's add in a gradient texture like that Control t to add in our texture coordinates and then let's take a look at what that actually looks like you can see that it goes from it's actually going uh, from black on this edge to white on this edge but we want to kind of flip it so that it's um black on this side and white on this side. So what we can do is just rotate our texture coordinates and you figure out which one it is, not Y, not X. So we need to rotate it along Z, maybe, yes. So we'll rotate it roughly 90 degrees along Z and then we will move it somewhere. I always have to, I can never figure out which direction it is. All right, so we're gonna move it along the X while being rotated 90 degrees along Z. And now you can see we have black on this side, white on that side. And if we wanna add a little bit of contrast here, because of course we do, let's add in a color ramp. We will, let's switch it to constant and that will allow us to kind of actually see where this border is. Something like that. And then now if we switch this to linear, back to linear, we're getting kind of that gradient. It's going from black here to white is somewhere around there. Um, let's erase all of that. And now we want to add, you know, we could just plug this directly into our mix shader like that. And then when we do this, now you can see we're getting some red along here and our silvery metal right there. But, you know, I want to add a little bit more variation there because... I always want to add more variation. So let's add in a noise texture. And this time what we're going to do is actually mix the noise texture with our texture coordinates. And that will actually allow us to kind of have a little bit kind of variation along here. So our edge looks more like that. Little trick there for you. So let's just take our texture coordinates, plug them into the noise texture, and then we will take our noise texture and mix RGB it with our texture coordinates because in reality texture coordinates are just x y z which corresponds to rgb that's why if you were to actually take a look at it and look at the texture coordinates like you would anything else you get rgb values because well that's what it's representing so we can just take our noise texture and mix it 
with our texture coordinates. And then if we plug this into our gradient texture, that will actually give us a little bit of variation here. So let's actually bring that in something like that. If we have, let's actually just look at our, it's kind of hard to see there. Uh, let's actually kind of just see what happens if we mix in a little bit. Bump this up, something like that. Let's give it a little bit of rotation, kind of match the angle a little bit better. Bump this up, something like so. And then now as we kind of start adding in our noise texture, you can see it kind of starts making a little bit more jagged edges right there, but we don't really want a whole lot of detail. In fact, we want no detail. Uh, and then we can take our scale and bring it down a little bit, just kind of more wavy rather than necessarily jagged edges like it was. And I think that looks pretty good. Just add a little bit more like that. And then we can just shift all of this a little bit, something like that. That gives us a little bit of variation with our blood right there. So then now if we actually take a look at it, you can see we get some variation with our blood. It's not really just a smooth straight line either. Uh, let's bump that in a little bit. There we go. It's, it's kind of hard to see but there is a little bit of variation there. So I think it looks pretty good on that regard. Now we can actually focus on the inside of our pumpkin because right now it's, you know, just white. There's not really anything going on inside of our pumpkin. But first, before we can do that, we need to actually add in a light on the inside. So uh, let's actually not use a light like that. Let's use a little tiny, tiny cube, um, not a plane. Let's actually use a little tiny, tiny cube shrink it down a lot, make it really tiny, bring it up inside our pumpkin, add a new material. We will call this candle light. Switch our surface to an emission shader and then change the color temperature to a black body. And this just allows us to actually plug in kind of the temperature. If it were like say a metal object that were hot enough to start glowing, uh, at different temperatures, what color would it be glowing? Well, in this case, we want it roughly 2000 degrees, you know, a nice orangish color. If you were to take a look at it directly, it's pretty orange, everything like that. Uh, and then we can just bump up the strength until we're getting a nice glow from the inside of our pumpkin. And the nice thing here is, you know, you can start to see uh, on the floor here, right here, you can actually kind of see the reflection of our light shining through the mouth of a pumpkin, of our pumpkin. So we've done that. Let's make it a wee bit smaller and bump up the strength. I think that looks reasonably good. And finally, we can just add in a cylinder for, you know, kind of a candle roughly. So let's actually switch out of like that, make it roughly candle sized scale along the Z axis, something like that. And then if you bring it up like this, and this will be our candle, you know, we'll add a new material, call this candle wax. And then we will change the color of our candle wax to something like, oh, I don't know, make it a little bit of a warm tone. Um, not like super saturated or anything like that, just a little bit warm, not pure white. And then we'll make it kind of dark, a little bit dark. So now that you can kind of see it in there a little bit, it doesn't really look like a whole lot right now, but you know, it is what it is. So let's actually rename our objects to candle flame or candle light, whatever you want to call it. That's our candle flame. And then for our cylinder, we will rename it to just candle. Let's put both of these into our lights collection like that. And let's bring up our candle flame right now so you can actually see it a little bit better. And we will parent our candle flame to our candle so that if we move one around, we will move the other. So let's parent to object. So let's take a look at that and get it lined up a little bit better. Something like that. So now that we have that, we have a little bit of glow on the inside. So, you know, you can model like the candle is melting, some wax is dripping down or whatever. 
something like that. But when I was testing it, you have to do a lot of work to like actually get it to even be visible at all. Since basically, you know, once it's reflected on the inside of our pumpkin and everything and bouncing around and all that stuff, it basically treats the whole pumpkin as a gigantic soft light. So any drippings or whatever that are coming down have to be really pronounced. And I honestly don't think it's worth it to do that because uh, you really won't be able to see it very easily at all. But one thing you can see is the inside of the pumpkin. So we're gonna do a little bit of work with this and make it look a little bit better. Right now we have it as a little bit of a warm tone kind of, I think that's all right. We don't really need to mess with that a whole lot. As far as roughness, we'll make it kind of rough, but not super rough. Cause you know, there might be a little bit of residual fluids or whatever left on the inside of the pumpkin. And then the real trick here is to add our bump mapping. That's where kind of all the interesting stuff from the inside of the pumpkin is going to come from. So let's add in a noise texture, control T, a color ramp. I should figure out how to write like a, an add-on or whatever to make it so that this particular combination of nodes has a shortcut or something, because I literally use it all the time. Hook this up to our bump node and let's just see what it looks like. So we want to add in a little bit of contrast first thing, just so we can see what we're working with a little bit easier. And then we're going to bump up our detail a little bit, bump up the roughness a tiny, tiny bit, and then bump up our scale a lot. And this will give us a lot of, you know, micro variations on the inside here like this, maybe not quite that small, something like this. And this will give us a lot of bumps to work with, with our uh, bump mapping here. So of course, change this to a really small number, bring that down to zero, connect it to our normal. And then let's take a look at what it looks like. If we start bringing it in a little bit, you know, something like that. Let's just, just look at this. If we bump, you know, if we bring it up all the way, you can see there's a lot of texture in there and that looks really good. I like it, but we don't want that much. We want just enough to kind of be visible a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good to me. Maybe bump it down a little bit, maybe 0.3. We'll put it at 0.3 and that gives us a little bit of texture on the inside and that also helps us see, you know, the contours of it a little bit better as well. And then one thing we can kind of do it, you know, you may find that it doesn't really make a difference, add a little bit of subsurface as well. Cause once the light's bouncing around in there, you know, it doesn't just reflect off as a little bit of subsurface to it. So I'll just do that a little tiny bit. Of course it will slow down your render. Um, so, use at your own risk. It's a really subtle difference. You may not notice a difference. So feel free to not do that at all. Uh, we'll slow it down a little bit. Luckily, it's not a very big portion of our thing here. It's not a very big portion of our frame. So we don't really have to worry about it a whole lot. All right. So that basically does all of our materials for us. Um, one thing I do want to fix though is this edge here, this looks really kind of not good. I think these, uh, the sides of these things are actually drawing from the outside of the pumpkin rather than the inside where I think it should be drawing from. So we need to come over to our layout tab. Not really, but I like to, cause it's a bigger frame. Let's go into edit mode, face select mode, and then hopefully, nope, we do not get the luxury of loop selecting all this stuff. So. I'm going to have to go through, select all of the faces manually. All right, now I've got all these faces selected, so we can just head over to our object data properties, add in a new vertex group, just call this cut edges. I don't know, something like that. And then click assign. So now if I were to deselect everything and then click select on our cut edges, It'll select all of that and nothing else. That's just for future in case I want to change uh, anything about these faces in particular. So we'll take our inside material and just assign it to that. And now if I were to tab out of edit mode and go into rendered view, you can see that it actually is doing that a little bit better. It looks a little bit better anyways. Um, let's actually pull back on our bump mapping a little bit. Cause now that we're looking at it from these side faces, it's a little bit more apparent that I have it a little bit high. So we'll come over here and pull this down to, I don't know, 0.2, something like that. 
and take a look at it again. You know, that looks pretty good. One thing you will notice is that there's this kind of glowing white edge where the two uh, materials join together kind of. I don't know why it's doing that. It's really inconvenient, but I, I don't know how to kind of fix that. It is kind of, it just kind of is what it is. You know, you can kind of see a little glint of the blood on the knife right here. In fact, let's actually move this in just a little bit deeper. So you can kind of see the blood, uh, blood on the knife a little bit better. And of course doing this, you know, now we'll have to adjust our blood material. So let's head back over to shading, take our knife blade, figure out where that gradient is and let's actually just move it from here. Go this way with it. Something like that. That looks pretty good to me. Maybe pull back a little bit from here. There we go. Now that looks pretty good. We got a bloody knife sticking out of our pumpkin like that. And I think that all looks pretty good. Let's, you know, I kind of want this floor to fade into darkness rather than just being a hard edge. Cause you know, once we turn off all of our overlays and stuff, you can see it's just a hard edge like that. So let's just select our plane, our floor plane scale until it kind of just fades into darkness and you can't see it anymore. And that just looks a little bit more natural to me. So one final touch before we're finished here, it's almost done, I promise, is to add a little bit of fog because like I said in my make anything creepy video, fog and darkness make everything creepy. So let's just add in a cube. Let's go back to solid view mode, scale up our cube quite a bit and just move it so we don't have to actually render a whole lot. Um, see, here's our, our camera right there. That's kind of where it's starting from. And we just want the, our volume right here. This is gonna be a volume shader. We just want it to occupy as much space as it needs to. We don't want to be excessive with it. Something like that, I think, is probably gonna end up being fine. I think that looks fine. It goes far enough into the distance that I don't think it'll matter a whole lot. So let's add in a new shader, call this one fog, remove our surface, add in a principled BS or principal volume, and then we'll go over to our shader tab. And wow, look at that, it's foggy. But I don't want this to be, you know, an even fog all the way through. I'd rather it be kind of, you know, a rolling mist on the floor instead so that you can still see the top of the pumpkin clearly and not have to worry about, you know, it being obscured or anything. And also so I don't, I don't want so much of this glow up here. I just want it to kind of be something eerie on the ground. So we will use another gradient texture because well, it's a gradient that I'm asking for control T and then we'll do the same trick that we did to add some variation to the, um, blood texture here. We use noise, add some noise right here. And then we will mix it with our texture coordinates. So plug this one into color and then this one into there as well. You make sure you use the color input on this one because that'll actually give you the variation in three dimensions uh, rather than rather than you know being a black and white image like that. It'll actually be a colored image which gives you a little bit more variation. So let's go back in here disconnect that and mix this with our gradient. Let's just take a look at our gradient and see what it looks like from here. So first of all, you know, we want to rotate this again. We'll rotate this along the Y axis this time. Uh, go like, yeah, we'll go uh, black on bottom. So we'll do that, rotate 90 degrees so that it's going from uh, black down here to white up here. Now that we've done that, we can kind of fine tune in our stuff here. We'll actually just look at our noise texture real quick. We want a little bit of detail here, or a little bit smaller. These are kind of like, you know, the little ripples in the noise texture or the fog. Give it quite a bit of detail. And then roughness, we'll bump it down. And that gives us kind of this, you know, vague cloudiness to it. And then, you know, to really sell it, just 
add in some distortion in there, like, you know, the clouds of fog twisting around and everything, like turbulence or whatever. So we do that. Let's look at our gradient texture and then kind of mix in our noise. First of all, we should probably actually move it so we can actually see what we're looking at. And then, so here's what it looks like. And then as you mix in our noise texture, you get something that looks a little bit like this. Well, you know, a fair amount, but not a whole lot of noise, something like that. And then we'll use a color ramp to kind of fix the ratios here a little bit, get it moved where we want it to be. So let's just go ahead and flip it from here. And you know, this will be where the fog is most dense, the highest value and then the least dense up there. It just gives us a little bit more intuitive to work with this way. So something like that. And then we can add in a little bit here, something like that. We'll, we'll see it a little bit clearer once we actually look at it with our volume shader. All right. So now let's hook this up to the density value of our principal volume, disconnect it from there. And you can kind of see what we're working with a little bit. You can see where the, the, the light is that we've added in here. Our, um, our key light, is sitting right here. So you can see the glow of the fog going in there like that. And if we look at it from the side, you can see it's a little bit high right now. I don't quite want it that high. So we can pull it back like this. Let's look at it from camera view. Something like that. Let's actually move our fog a little bit so that it's enveloping the camera some. All right, so now that we've done that, we can kind of, the black value right here will be kind of controlling the top of our range It'll where it's cutting off. I actually wanna move this, there we go. And then this middle value will kind of be controlling the fade a little bit, how smooth it's going from one to the other. Let's see what this looks like. Let it clear up a wee bit. I think that actually looks kind of decent. Let's Let's add in a map range node and we can control the density of the fog this way um bump it down a little bit so it's not quite so thick i like how it's kind of piling up in the distance over here i don't know if you'll be able to see it with compression and everything but then you can kind of see through uh, the fog right here all right i think that looks pretty good let's let's render one out really quick and see what that looks like Obviously, I need to uh, hide all this other stuff. It looks kind of weird. So let's cancel that, wait for it to cancel. First, let's rename that to Fog. We'll bring this all the way up to our main collection. Let's hide our cutouts. Things I don't need are hidden from the render. And I think we're good to render it now. So let's try it again. We'll hit Render and see what we got going on here. All right, so now that it's finished rendering, we can actually take a look at it, and I think it looks pretty good. You know, could be better, could be worse. A few things I would change, you know, I think it's obscuring the front of the pumpkin a little bit. I do like what it looks like kind of in the background. Some, I do wish it faded out a little bit more, looked more into the distance. So, you know, just lower the fog level a little bit. You can get that more distance line of sight and not obscure this either. And, you know, of course, I was going for an angry pumpkin here, and that just did not happen. It looks more like a, I'm not sure, this side looks almost angry, and then this side is normal, and the teeth are all offset. So, you know, spend more time on your pumpkins, get the shape looking all right and not so weird looking like mine is, unless you want it to look weird, in which case, you do you. Anyways, that's all I've got for you in this video, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it you know, came out early enough for you this Halloween. And if you liked it, like it or whatever. I don't know. That's all I got. See you later. Bye-bye.